last kids are just coming in from downstairs. Oh my goodness, and we've run out of front row seat here. You guys want to come in this way? Yeah. There's lots of other seats though, so find a place. Welcome, welcome everyone. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Good morning and welcome to our Sunday, January 15th, 2023 service. Hello, Maya. How are you? I hear you. <laughs> At Knox United Church, Embro, which is located on the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee Gaap and Anishinaabek peoples, Treaty 29-1827. I'm Reverend Susan, and I'm pleased to be here worshiping with you in person and online. As we deepen our relationship to God and to each other, through our conversations, our praying, our prayer, and our praise. May we be strengthened and taught and, and, and shaped to do the work that God calls us to in the world. Let us sing our gathering hymn. <laughs> Jesus, light of the world. Join me now for our call to worship. There is a response. We delight in your steadfast love. O oh God, we draw near to you in our joy and suffering, our play and in our work our celebrations and sorrows. From the bottom of our hearts we cry, we delight in your steadfast love. No? No response, okay. <laughs> when I say from the bottom of our hearts we cry, you say we delight in your steadfast love. We'll see how we do here. Oh, yes. Oh, yay, we do have it. Wonderful, thank you, Sylvie. <laughs> If you would remember our wrongdoings, we would be bent over with guilt. But forgiveness is in your heart, and you honor us with your love. From the bottom of our hearts we cry, we delight in your steadfast love. We wait for your presence and hope to hear your word come to life. We wait expectantly, like the dawn piercing through the night, like rain in the heat of the day. From the bottom of our hearts we cry, we delight in your steadfast love. Let us pray. For the everyday, ordinary miracles, we give you thanks, O oh God. For a new day that follows each night, for the seasons of life, their coming and going, for the hope of renewed life, for the gift of your compassion, for your presence among us now, for the everyday, ordinary miracles, we give you thanks, O oh God. Amen. Well, we've got the Blast Kids in the house, and, uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Woo! Woo! let's hear it, let's hear it. It's so great to have you here today. My goodness, how many do we have here? 19. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And oh, we got Maya too. And we've got some leaders. Yay. That's great. Now we're talking about, oh wait, before I begin, usually at a a little bit long, a little bit further ahead in the service, I do announcements and I announce people's birthdays. But 
not everybody is going to be upstairs when I do that. So I just want to announce that it's Ellie Newman's birthday on Tuesday, January the 17th. And so Ellie, happy birthday. That's awesome. Um, so M is for miracle, and that's what I'm going to be talking about today. But M also stands for something else that you guys might have been talking about this morning already. M is for, can anybody come up with that word? What was the other word we were talking about? Yeah. Miracle is M for miracle, but is there another one that you, that you talk, what's that little one over there? Did you say it? M is for magi. You're right. That's a that's an interesting word, isn't it? So does anyone know what a magi is? No. No? Oh my goodness. Okay, well, magi in the story that you you hear about, they the magi were wise people or or people, well, you know, we're not really sure uh, who, exactly who they were. They're talked about in the Bible as kings, but they were wise people from the east, and they saw something in the sky that they were following, as they were curious about where this thing in the sky would lead them. Does anyone know what was in the sky? What do you see in the sky when you look up at night? Stars. Stars. So there was a star, and it was so bright, and it was so big, and they were so curious about it. So they decided that they'd follow this star. Now, um, the star led them, who did the star lead them to? Do we know who the star led them to? To Jesus, that's right. The star led them to baby Jesus. And so they, they didn't know what, what they were doing or where they were going, but they, they came prepared. I guess they were like Boy Scouts too, because they had presents with them. Now there were the traditional presents. Does anyone remember what the presents were? Do you remember? What were they? Frankincense. Frankincense, yeah. Do you, does anyone know another one? Gold. Gold, and what was the last one? Myrrh. Myrrh, okay. So they took those gifts along with them um, to bring them to baby Jesus. Now let's pretend for a moment that we're all magi, right? We're all on a search for this baby Jesus. Who is this dude, and what's he going to tell us? What's he all about, right? We want to take some gifts along with us. What kind of gifts do you think we should take the baby? Should we take gold, frankincense, myrrh? I don't have any of those things. What, what, what do you think? Baby bottles? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. What else? What else do we need to take with us? Diapers. Diapers. That's a good idea. Diapers. Every baby needs diapers. Oh, what do you think? What do you think we should take the baby? <laughs> Susu? Yeah. Aha, uh -huh. Sus, right? Yeah. yeah, as pacifier. That helps sometimes too, doesn't it? Do you have another idea? Milk. Milk, right. Something to eat, right? Some food. And how about a baby blanket? Yeah. Right? Babies like special blankets that are a little smaller and soft and they smell really nice. And we like to wrap the babies up. So that's a good idea, too. So does everyone have those things? Do you have some diapers? Who said diapers? Really? you have some diapers on? What? You don't have diapers on you? Who's got milk? You got some milk? You got some milk? OK. Did you have a baby blanket? No? OK. Oh, one for Maya? Oh, yeah, Maya's going to need that one. So I don't know. But, well, do you have any gifts? Do you guys think you have any gifts with you that you can take? Because you're on this journey today. You're going to be heading to yeah, find this baby Jesus. Jesus. No, do, we have any do you have anything to take? You give your headband. That's oh, what do you have? A headband. A headband. Yeah, I don't know how useful that would be. But you know what? I'm here to tell you that you do have gifts. Are you, are you, do you kindness and love? Who said love? You said love, kindness, maybe helping out, right? Sometimes gifts are not things. Gifts are actions, right? Gifts are things that we can do for other people. And so if we take all those things with us, then we'll be all ready to, to take care of baby Jesus. And the no, you know, the more we give those gifts that we have, the more we get to know baby Jesus. So that's important too. So I have a whole bag of presents here, but... I don't know what's in these boxes. Wait, do you see all the presents in here? 
And there's this one box that we're going to open. Who's going to open this? Are you going to open this one? Okay, and see what's in it. What's in it? What have we got? They can't go any further. You have to come closer to me. I can't, I can't reach you. What do you have? Take something out. What do you got? Okay, give me a K. All right, what else do we got? You can yell. Like when I say give me a K, then you can say K. Okay, give me an R. R. There we go. There we go. Okay, got another one there? Give me an A. A. All right, we've got an A. What else do we got here? Give me a P. P. Okay, what does it spell? Per Kirka. Per Park. What? Park? Okay, here, come up here. What do you need first? P? Okay, here, come up here and hold it up for me. Who else? Where? Here, give me an A. Stand over here. Okay, what's the next letter? Come on around. Come on. Come on down. All right. All right, here we go. Here's the, come on over here. You gotta be right over here. Okay, you can hold the last letter. Okay, and what is it, what is it spell? No, what does it spell? Par. 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 What does it spell? Par. 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 All right, so this is one of your clues because you're on a journey, right? You're those magi that are going on a journey, and this clue is telling you to go where? Oh, to the park. So I suggest you put on your coats and your hats and your mitts. There's a park over there. Well, I think that might be where you, you're yeah. headed. So you guys head downstairs while we sing the opening hymn. Arise, your light has come. Does somebody want to take a bag of gifts? All right, guys. so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. 
After having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. May God bless these words to our deeper understanding and our daily walk. For those who may not know, I joined an online clergy group over two years ago, just before I started uh, here um, in, at Knox in the fall of 2020. It was just uh, in the first months of the pandemic. We're a group of colleagues who have known each other for many years, and during the difficult times of the pandemic, we decided that we would join together and meet weekly online. Uh, it was a time to encourage each other, inspire each other, and uh, support each other in our various ministries. It's truly been a life-giving experience. So many clergy have gone on stress leave and uh, extended medical leave over the last few years, and our group so far, knock on wood, has, has stayed uh, healthy and grounded, uh, sustaining ourselves during this time. Last winter, we ran a preacher series, and we assigned one Sunday uh, in, in six uh, to preach. We recorded our sermons, and we shared them with the other churches so that the video sermon could be shown during that time. This year, we've changed things a little bit. Um, some of the churches don't have the ability to do the video, and so anyway, we decided that we're going to share our sermons, but in the written form, and that way we can we can preach them live to you. So this week's sermon is written by Reverend Sarah Horvath. She used to be Sarah Grady, but she was married in November, and she took her husband's name, uh, Horvath. Reverend Sarah is at St. Paul's United Church in Paris, Ontario, and I've made a few minor changes to her sermon so that it flows a little bit better for me, but uh, the thoughts are Sarah's thoughts and Sarah's experiences. I do not have a 17-year-old stepdaughter uh, that she mentions in her reflection. So let us listen. Sarah Jewell opens this week's chapter, M is for Miracle, talking about how we tend to look at miracles in one of two ways. The first of these being the ones that are on a grandiose scale, the big, fancy, awe-inspiring, mind-blowing, did you see that, miracles. The kind of miracles we see in the headlines, usually associated with curing someone of an illness or a disease, and the everything is all right now miracles, but God is good and has answered my prayers miracles. The second way, Sarah Jewell says, we can look at miracles is through the lens of the ordinary. The ordinary, everyday variety miracles. The miracles that are quiet and unassuming. The kind of miracles that no one really pays much attention to. As I thought about these two ways of viewing what constitutes a miracle, it seemed to me that the big, grandiose miracles are the type we tend to hear the most about. And yet, it's a miracle. It's such a common phrase, and I hear it quite often. I said it just last night when my 17-year-old stepdaughter emptied the dishwasher on her own without my husband or I even bugging her to do it. It's a miracle. And how can we forget that saying it's a miracle in the punchline in countless scenes on TV shows and in movies when something unexpected happens or a plan or a lie is inadvertently revealed? My favorite example of this is an episode from The Golden Girls, where Sophia sustains an injury that means she has to spend some time in a wheelchair while she recovers. Her daughter, Dorothy, hires a nurse to take care of Sophia while she's at work. And Dorothy starts to get suspicious that Sophia is enjoying the attention and pampering she is receiving from this nurse a little too much and is possibly lying about the severity of her injuries. This is confirmed in a scene where we see 
Sophia alone in the living room, sitting in her wheelchair. She looks around to see that no one is there. She stands up from the chair, and with a smile on her face, she starts to dance and sing around the living room. Dorothy walks in and catches her, to which Sophia exclaims, it's a miracle, I can walk. <laughs> All jokes aside, the subject of what constitutes a miracle is a heavily debated topic for us humans. In the context of our biblical teachings, religious scholars tend to agree that Jesus performs seven miraculous acts in the Gospel of John in order to illustrate that he is the divine Son of God. The first is the wedding at Cana, where he turns water into wine. Then he heals the official son in Capernaum, he goes on to heal a paralytic man on the Sabbath, feeds 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish, walks on water, gives a blind man his sight back, and then in our text from today, he raises Lazarus from the dead. And while these are all miracles that Jesus performs to show his divinity, there are many other acts in the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, that are considered miracles. He heals a bleeding woman in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. He calms the storm in Matthew and Mark. He cleanses the lepers and raises the widow's son from the dead in Luke. He exercises a demon from a woman in Mark. And of course, the greatest miracle of them all, he rises from the tomb on the third day after his death by crucifixion, and goes on to appear to his disciples and others for 40 days more before ascending into heaven. All these are miraculous events in the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. But what about in our daily lives? Where do miracles fit in for us? Like all the people who went to Jesus for help and healing, we too tend to seek out miracles in difficult circumstances in our lives. And this is where the idea of miracles gets tricky for us in our life of faith. When we seek out miraculous, we do so most often by praying for those miracles. But what happens to our faith when we pray for miraculous outcomes in difficult situations and we feel as though our prayers aren't answered? Where are the miracles for us when we pray for cancer to be cured? Or when we pray for an end to a loved one's alcohol or drug addiction? Where is the miracle, child, that we long to be pregnant with? Where are the miraculous friendships and romantic relationships we so desperately seek? Where are the miracles we long for and pray for? Back in university, I had a friend say to me that he no longer believed in God because his prayer for a, muse, a miracle wasn't answered. His three-month-old niece, Kelsey, was diagnosed with a brain tumor that the doctors weren't sure they could do anything about. He told me that he prayed to God every day for months to heal Kelsey. But in the end, the cancerous tumor was too invasive and there wasn't anything that could be done. Kelsey died shortly before what would have been her first birthday. The miracle healing my friend had prayed for went unanswered. And so he turned his anger on God and decided in the end there couldn't possibly be a God if his simple prayer for Kelsey to be made well again couldn't be answered. My friend is certainly not alone in his experience. I believe that we all have had experiences like this in our lives. Prayers for miraculous outcomes for our loved ones, or the world, or ourselves, that seem to go unanswered. I think the 
biggest struggle for with all of this for most of us is that miraculous things seem to happen for some but not others. This is because we tend to believe in a God of justice and some circumstances leave us wondering why. Why would a just God choose a miraculous cure for an elderly neighbor who has cancer but have nothing to offer a beloved infant as she lay dying? Why would God offer an even bigger financial windfall to an already wealthy person while others are begging in the streets? Why would God intervene on behalf of some and not others? I believe that the life of Jesus can give us some help in answering this question. God is made known in Jesus who lived an earthly life, who showed us the ways we can be in relationship with one another, who taught the importance of prayer. I appreciate the thoughts of U.S. theologian John Pavlovitz, who helped me clarify my thoughts on the subject of praying for miracles this past week. He says, and I quote, I don't believe in a God who withholds miraculous healing or compassionate care until sufficiently begged by us to do so. I believe prayer works by unlocking our empathy for others. I believe it binds us together in relationship and reminds us of our commonalities. I believe it to be a beautiful expression of love for people who are suffering. I believe it connects us personally to God and to each other in ways that cannot be qualified or quantified. I believe it is a sacred act of kindness." End quote. You see, the gospel stories are full of stories about Jesus and his miraculous healing powers, but they are also full of stories of how he showed kindness and compassion, how he lifted up the lowly, how he challenged the people in positions of power to do better. These parts of Jesus' story are all miraculous as well, and they teach us the many ways we can be ordinary, everyday miracles for each other. I love the quote at the beginning of this week's chapter, mostly because the quote isn't by a famous theologian or an ancient philosopher or even by Jesus himself. It's from a rock star, John Bon Jovi. The quote says, Miracles happen every day. Change your perception of what a miracle is, and you'll see them all around you. I want to take a moment and just appreciate the simplicity of that quote. Miracles happen every day. Change your perception of what a miracle is, and you'll see them all around you. Miracles are part of our everyday life because our very lives are a miracle. Wendell Berry, a beloved American writer, farmer, and environmentalist, suggests we overlook many of the miracles around us. Quote, whoever really has considered the lilies of the field or the birds of the air and pondered the improbability of their, of their existence in this warm world within the cold and empty stellar distances will hardly balk at the turning of water into wine, which was, after all, a very small miracle. We forget the greater and still continuing miracle by which water with soil and sunlight is turned into grapes." End quote. Ordinary, everyday miracles happen all around us each and every moment of each and every day. The miracle of living, breathing, creating, 
growing, expanding, contracting, impregnating, pollinating, dying, and birthing that take place every day on every inch of this earth. The ordinary, everyday miracles that we take for granted. Because everything around us is a miracle. Our existence, all of creation, the resources that provide for us, each other. The miracle of our living is that even our darkness, our fear, and yes, even our suffering can make the light of life more beautiful. In her book, Praying Our Goodbye, author Joyce Rupp wrote about waking up to find frost on her window pane one morning. She says, we live our long, warm days in the shadows, in what often feels like barren, cold winter, so unaware of the miracles that are being created in our spirits. It takes the sudden daylight, some unexpected surprise of life, to cause our gaze to look upon a simple, stunning growth and remind us that we are not nearly as lost as we thought we were, that all the time we thought we were dead inside, beautiful things were being born in us. End quote. So what if all those miracles that Jesus is credited with aren't any more special or life-changing or significant than the kind of healing that we get from our friends and our neighbors, our church communities, our mentors, our co-workers, our parents, our children, our grandchildren, our siblings, who help pick us back up when we need spiritual nourishment, uplifting, renewal, or motivation. We can all be ordinary, everyday miracles for each other by taking care of each other, by welcoming into our lives those who are struggling, those who are entombed by their past or their past choices, those who experience social distance for a variety of reasons. And we can do this by feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, offering living waters to those who thirst. And in doing these things, we commit ordinary, everyday, yet very radical and miraculous acts of love, just like Jesus did in each and every one of those miracle narratives, and in so many other ordinary, everyday ways in his life. And there is no greater power we can witness to than the healing power of love. May it be so. Amen. Let us sing together from More Voices 27, God Creator, You Gave Us Life. This hymn might not be as familiar to us, but uh, we're going to give it a try. You might want to turn to the music, sometimes that helps. So More Voices, which is this book, uh, 27. <laughs>
participate directly in the ministry of the church. Your gifts to the church and to mission and service are ways we make Christ manifest in the world. Let us be generous. The offering plates are just outside the sanctuary doors, and for those online, you can uh, send your donations by check or eating transfer, um, or we can all get on a car, which would be wonderful, pre-authorized remittance. Let us sing. and daring justice. May these gifts help us be the people and the church you long for us to be. Bless these gifts and those offered through car and online and multiply them for the sake of ourselves and the world. Amen. I just want to announce today um, that we keep in our hearts the Reverend Jim Evans and his wife, Karen Patton Evans. Jim, a former member of Oxford Presbytery and former minister here at Knox United Church. Uh, he's presently serving at New Vision United Church in St. Thomas, and he is seriously ill now with a cancerous brain tumor. At this point, uh, there is nothing that can be done. He has been uh, fighting for quite a while, and he is now resting comfortably at Sakura House. So our, our thoughts are with uh, Jim and Karen and uh, the family. We have some birthdays coming up. Dan Frazier has a birthday. Calvin Benbo has a birthday. Robert McIntosh. Barb Cousins, Barb's in the house. Happy birthday, Barb, coming up. Where is, where is she? There she is, she's yeah, hiding. You didn't even wait. You just trying to hide. You have another birthday. That's, it's a good thing. The alternative is not so good. It's good to have another birthday. So let's, let's uh, embrace that. And Julie Rutherford has a birthday. Are there any other? And Ellie Newman, who we talked about earlier, has a birthday coming up. Any other community announcements or birthdays or anniversaries? celebrations happening that the community would like to know. Nothing happened. Not even from John Hazelager. Come on, John. <laughs> You're always good for a baby born or somebody doing something. It's usually with my goats this week. <laughs> what, what's that? Four baby goats this week. Four baby goats were born to the Dow family. Yay, four baby goats. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, I'm also uh, sending out an invitation to anyone who would like to join a group of people to uh, gather and examine how our church can be more justice-minded. Um, and if you're interested in justice, you can contact me at rev, R-E-V, Susan Cole at gmail.com. Affirming ministries are congregations, regions, educational institutes, and other ministries within the United Church of Canada that publicly declare um, their commitment to inclusion and justice for all people, especially people of all sexual orientations and gender identities. And although affirming ministries make um, an explicit statement about issues of sexuality and gender, their commitment to justice as a whole is far broader. So it's a deeper uh, subject than just sexuality and gender. And our hope is that two groups can be created. Uh, I know that Westminster United Church has a group of three interested people. And if we could gather a group of uh, three or four people from Knox United, that would be wonderful, and together, we can come together and explore ways that our congregations might become uh, affirming, at least to educate the congregations uh, about um, things that we can do 
to be more justice minded. And so we're looking uh, for a group of people to come forward. If you're interested in that, please let me know. Let us now pray, pray our prayers of the people. O oh God, we weep for the world. It's filled with war and rumors of war. Poverty and neglect, disease and disfigurement. The earth itself groans for release from climate change, overpopulation and abuse. We weep with you, O oh God, as we cry for justice around the world. O oh God, we weep for our community. Because of fear and busyness and apathy, we often do not love our neighbor as ourselves. We prefer privacy to compassion, and we live our lives in silent isolation, far from the suffering of others. We weep with you, O oh God, as we cry for justice for our communities. O oh God, we weep for our congregation. We pray for those of us who are experiencing hardship and loss. We especially remember at this time Reverend Jim Evans and Karen, his wife, and the rest of the family. May we weep with those who weep. And may this compassion move us to seek justice for all people. Bless us now as we pray in the way of Jesus saying, our heavenly parent, our mother and our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is from Voices United 586, We Shall Go Out with Hope of Resurrection. Thank you.
Although the flame no longer burns, the light does not disappear. It changes and goes with us, continuing to be the light of the world within us as we go out into our lives. In the name of Jesus and by the voice of Jesus, may we live and live again. And as we go, may we know that the mystery that is the love of God, the compassion that is the peace of Jesus, and the companionship of the empowering Holy Spirit are with us now and always. Amen.